You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now. Topping the list, Knoxville police managed to talk a man out of an apartment after a chase that ended with a man holed up in that apartment complex. It brought lots of police activity, and only in the last 90 minutes have things actually calmed down. Now, at one point, officers had blocked off a section of Oldham Avenue in the Western Heights neighborhood. The department says this started around 3 with police trying to stop a car on I-40. A man inside, they say, was wanted for questioning. Police say the car didn't stop and they lost sight of it before finding it at an uh, abandoned at an apartment complex. The special operations squad and negotiators were then called in. The man came out voluntarily around 6 at last check. Officers were taking him to KPD headquarters to be questioned as part of an investigation. We're told it's possible he could face charges for trying to flee from officers. Well, we should also note this is the second situation like this this week. As you may recall, we showed you a live picture of a standoff Monday evening right here on the 7. This one was out of West Knox County on Lovell Road. Unfortunately, that situation ended with a suspect taking his own life. Tonight, we are learning more about the circumstances that led to a Knox County Sheriff's Office deputy accidentally being shot by her partner earlier this month and the arrest that followed. Now, we do have a warning. Some of you might find the body camera video a bit disturbing. As we've told you, Deputy Lydia Driver was called out along with several other officers to a home on Brickyard Road to serve a warrant. Two of those officers had gone around to the side of the home when a dog rushed at them from off in the dark. Here's what Driver's body camera captured. Sheriff's office says the other deputy was trying to shoot the dog, but missed hitting deputy driver instead. The officer also today, or the office also today, released video from that officer's body cam. We've stopped the video the second before he fired. Notab notably, the dog's head is seen just inches away from the point where deputy driver was hit in the upper leg. The Office of Professional Standards has now concluded that no general orders were violated while all of this was unfolding. Now, we also learned today the case behind all of this was an effort to arrest a woman named Ashley Weber on identity theft and forgery charges. According to documents released today, a man named Albert Bowling told deputies that Weber was not inside the home. She was later found hiding in a crawl space under the home and taken into custody. Bowling was arrested on a charge of accessory after the fact for hiding Weber, knowing she was wanted by law enforcement. Next now on the Big 7, strong winds, rain, lightning, damage many East Tennessee neighborhoods overnight. Maybe yours was impacted. The Fort Sanders neighborhood saw flooding. This was the, the view along 23rd Street where high water was up to the windshields of some cars. Knoxville firefighters had to help four people trapped in their apartment by the flooding. And over in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, even more damage was reported in the Greenbrier area. This area has been battered pretty hard. Uh, really the last couple of weeks. We're told overnight storms damaged the road even more and the National Park says water is now flowing under the surface of the road, undermining its stability. The National Park says engineers will assess the road and make recommendations for repairs over the next several days. In the meantime, we're told the Greenbrier area will remain closed until further notice. In Anderson County, flash floods nearly put an end to this year's county fair. The fair started on Monday, so all the rides, the exhibits were up. The fair president told us this morning the flash floods caused around $100,000 worth of damage, but crews have been cleaning up and the gates were able to open at 5 tonight. Now take a look at the Powell area here for just a moment where our Veronica Obey has been out assessing the damage there. She spoke with many homeowners that had a yard to clean up. However, some of them were not as lucky to only have just a yard to worry about. Yeah, that same damage can even be seen outside of the Broad Acres neighborhood. You can see there behind me some trees and limbs down still. And those inside the neighborhood say it looks just about the same there. And it all came to reality when they woke up this morning. For one resident, what you're seeing there on your screen are tree branches that fell overnight onto their two vehicles. One has obvious damage and is a total loss, while the other is buried underneath, so it's hard to know if it faces any damages. Rebecca Halil, she lives at that home, and she shared with me the moments leading up to the trees crashing onto her and her husband's vehicles. Like everybody else, we were listening to thunder. It got stronger and stronger. Then all of a sudden, there was like a big bang. My husband woke up, 
and we realized that big branches had fallen on two of our cars that were there. And it was definitely a shocking moment for Rebecca and her husband, and she's not alone. But every resident I spoke with says they're just grateful that it wasn't any worse. Reporting in Powell, Veronica Obey, WATE 6 on your side. Well, the storms are over now. Utility crews still working right now to finish getting the power back on in several areas. KUB reporting nearly 2,800 homes and businesses still without power tonight. In addition to the storms, everybody's thinking about the heat right now, and our energy usage shows it, that's for sure. The Tennessee Valley Authority posted this morning that yesterday's peak power demand was above 30,000 megawatts. Across the entire Tennessee Valley, the average system temperature was 94 degrees. We're told that's the seventh highest July peak in TVA history. Continuing the Big 7 list for you right now, we're learning more about an explosion at a severe chemical plant earlier this afternoon. We're told no one is hurt. The explosion happened at Johnson Matthew Catalyst. This is just off of Airport Road. While the cause remains under investigation tonight, the Sevierville Fire Department is telling us what did go up in flames. It was a nickel aluminum powder is, is what is in the back house that was part of the explosion, but uh, it's been mentioned uh, to others there. None of that left the size. Johnson Matthew Catalyst is a specialty chemicals and sustainable technologies company headquartered in London. Next on the Big Seven, one of Tennessee's most wanted has been captured, captured across state lines. Take a look. TVI just tweeted that Christopher Falls has been captured and is now in custody. He was found in Illinois. He's accused of killing Julia Manning at her home in the Lansing community of Morgan County earlier this month. Falls is charged with second degree murder. Next up, TBI and the DEA set up mobile command centers in Morristown for an operation. That's what we're being told. You're looking at video of TBI and Drug Enforcement Administration command posts set up at the Morristown Regional Airport yesterday. Now, we have asked the DEA and the TBI just what this operation is. We're still waiting for that question to be answered tonight. We'll, of course, let you know when we find out more. And rounding out our Big 7 list for you right now, another business in Sevier County is closing its doors, saying inflation is to blame. Many businesses are struggling right now because of the current state of the economy. Inflation in the U.S. has hit 9.1 percent, a huge jump on the price of everyday items. WAT6 Senior Side Reporter Kristen Gallant spoke to the business owner who says they just can't keep up with the demand. Beauty and the Beast Formal Boutique opened four years ago. They've been very successful here in downtown Sevierville, and they weren't expecting to close their doors so soon. Beauty and the Beast Formal Boutique is one of just a handful of formal wear stores in Sevier County. From bridal gowns to pageant dresses, they've become a prime destination spot for men and women looking for an outfit for special events. Business was great, but they weren't prepared for what was to come. New owners are raising their rent, and it's a price they just can't afford. It was a shock to us that it was sold, but with the rise of property, um, sales and rentals, they want to raise our rent. And it just is at such a premium that we can't afford to stay in business and do. The owners of Beauty and the Beast are hoping to go out on a high note, selling dresses and tuxedos until their last day. They will be open until the end of August. That is when their lease ends. They'll be having sales until then. Reporting in Sevier County, Kristen Gallant, WATE 6 on your side.